Yeah, many years ago, the Lord spoke this to me. He says, grace flows in the worry-free areas of your life. We never ask, what have I believed wrong? Mm. Instead, we ask, what have I done wrong? Wow. But look, watch this. The ministry of righteousness exceeds, exceeds much more in glory. You ain't seen nothing yet. Yeah, many years ago, the Lord spoke this to me. He says, grace flows in the worry-free areas of your life. And he gave me a vision of golden pipes, soft golden pipes coming from heaven. Wow. And one golden pipe would minister, and it's all ministering golden oil. So one pipe would minister uh, financial wisdom. Another pipe would minister parenting skills. Another would minister your, for your walk with God. Another supplies for your, your uh, uh, victory in your, your trial. Whatever we need, the supply is coming down from God, always. Okay, and then I saw this person in the vision being worried in one particular area. And what happened is that he constricted the supply. It's not that the supply stops flowing, it's that by his worry, by his anxious thought, he took hold of that area and he constricted it. So in other words, the only thing he needs to do is to let go and the supply will keep on flowing. Wow. So that's essentially what the Lord said and the Lord kept on repeating in the Sermon on the Mount. Take no anxious thought and you'll be well taken care of. Take no anxious thought and you'll be better clothed than Solomon, the wealthiest man in all his, nice. in all his glory. So we, we are actually hindering it by only one thing, by holding on. And many years ago, the Lord said this to, to me also. He says, when you work, I rest. When you rest, wow. I work. Wow. Write down charisma, the definition by Taya. I want to give you Taya's definition so it's not from me, okay? Now, charisma is favor which one receives without any merit of his own. Favor which one receives without any merit of his own. Now, do you know the, the nine gifts of the Holy Spirit are called gifts, charisma, which means what? All the gifts of the Holy Spirit are what? Favor which one receives without any merit Amen. of his or her own. Amen. So if you say, I fasted 40 days and 40 nights for this gift, and that's why it's flowing. I know it's been taught like this, all right? Some people teach like, uh, you know, uh, I prayed long hours. That's why the gifts are flowing, okay? The, the, the problem is that they pray long hours and somewhere in those hours, they started believing that the gifts will flow, all right? As they're believing it costs. So the thing is that anybody, if it's not any merit of our own, then the one that is the least qualified can flow the greatest. Wow, that statement from the Holy Spirit. Amen? You know, if it's not any merit of our own, then I don't have to worry about, did I do this? Did I do that? It's no merit of your own. It's a favor gift. It's a grace gift. So if anyone should flow in the charisma of God, all right, in the charisma of God, it should be those who understand the charis. So what do you mean when you say repentance? What do these people mean when they say repentance? Number one, we saw that erroneous idea. They want, they want the preacher... To, sh to impart sin consciousness to the people. And that's not God's way in the gospel today. Now, I'm going to show you one thing. Once upon a time, in the Old Testament, there are plenty of occasions to show you that you have to repent first before God blesses you. In the Old Testament, you have to repent, turn away from sin, and then God blesses you. Now listen, in the New Testament, God blesses you, and it's the goodness of God that leads you to repentance. Now, I've been using that verse all the time, but look up the verse, Romans 2, verse 4. Or do you despise the riches of His goodness? How many know God is not just good? He is plenty of good. <laughs> the riches of His goodness, forbearance and long-suffering, not knowing that the goodness of God leads you to repentance. The word lead there is like the Holy Spirit leading you. The goodness of God leads you where? To repentance. It is not repentance. Listen, it is not repentance leads you to Goodness. It is goodness that leads you to repentance. A lot of believers still have this idea, if I repent, it will lead me to God's goodness. But hey, the Bible says God's goodness that leads you to repentance. It was the Lord turning around looking at Peter, all right, that broke Peter's heart. Amen. That kept him in love with Jesus. There's something about the look that says, 
you denied me, but I still love you. Whether you are rich or poor Christian, whether you are young or old believer, you are complete in Christ. You are not less complete than one who is 10 years Christian. You are complete in Christ. And in Christ dwells all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. So what we have done is that we take the starting post, you are complete in Christ, and we have, we have made it the finishing post. That's the problem. We tell people, one day, the finishing post. We think in the natural. We think like a human. Instead of reasoning from God downwards, we are reasoning from man upwards. God's reasoning, God's, God's reality is that you are complete in Christ. Even though you're safe this morning, you're complete in Christ. Now walk out that completeness. And if you fall and appear incomplete, you're still complete. Your fall does not incomplete you because your action in the first place did not complete you. It was Christ. So that's the finishing, that's the starting post. The starting post is you're complete. Don't make the starting post the finishing post. One day you'll be complete. I'm going to show you right now how many Christians think. And that's the reason they don't see the deliverance. Because there's something, you know, very profound. If you come to God, if you're a child of God and you come to God like a sinner, God doesn't respond to you. Because He's no more God to you. He's Father. Even when you fail, you come to God as a sinner. And you say, God, I, I have sinned, God. Uh, I'm a sinner, Lord. I, I'm a sinner saved by grace, God. God, have mercy on me. Be merciful to me, the sinner. And you think you're copying the guy that Jesus talked about who wasn't even faith. Now you're confusing the issue. Are you a child addressing the Father or are you a sinner addressing God? Once upon a time, we were all sinners and we addressed God. As, as, as a sinner, we addressed God. We can say things that be merciful to me, the, a sinner, and that's right. But God is no more just God to us. He's Father. And we are no more sinners to Him. We are his children. And our cry is, Abba. In the past, the church has had many ministers and we have great revivals, no doubt, no doubt, all right? And those revivals have been characterized by preaching against sin and they are revivals nonetheless. I'm not saying that people are not saved. I'm not saying they were not revivals. But if you look at 2 Corinthians 3, verse 9, it tells us up here, look up here, it says, the ministry, if the ministry of condemnation had glory, God calls those ministry, ministry of condemnation, those revivals that emphasize sin, preaching against sin, God calls them ministry of condemnation. And God said they were glorious. But look, watch this. The ministry of righteousness exceeds exceeds much more in glory. You ain't seen nothing yet. God is raising ministers of righteousness all over the world. There is a grace revolution on. Romans chapter 5, there is a verse that I want to call your attention to, and this is the verse, probably the number one verse that I think that is uh, still neglected, you know, and, and such a powerful truth built on these power twins, I call it. All right, in Romans 5 verse 17, and my book, uh, The Power of Right Believing, has so many testimonies of people, all right, who put into practice this one verse, okay? Especially when they are in addictions to mm -hmm. depression or eating disorders, anxiety attacks, you know, um, pornography. We have many testimonies of, of people, all right, who suffered from um, uh, eating disorders and addictions to pornography mm -hmm. especially, who found freedom. Wow. Okay, and how they found it is this, I teach that while you are still in bondage, all right, confess I am the righteousness of God in Christ. Praise God. You see, when, when, when there are symptoms of lack in our, our bodies, okay, uh, in our lives, we confess my God supplies. Right. All right, there are symptoms in our bodies, we confess, we don't confess the symptoms, right. we confess by His stripes, I am healed. When we sin, we confess our sin. Right. We never rise above it. As in everything, all right, everything in the Christian life works by faith, okay? When it comes to sin, we're not using our faith. We're confessing what's there. 
And I have a whole teaching. I know that, uh, you know, uh, for some people it's a huge controversial issue and all that, but to me it's very simple, all right? Um, when you confess uh, the righteousness of God, who Christ has made you, it honors the Father. Mm -hmm. It glorifies Jesus because of His finished work. Yeah. And so I have people that I, we, we teach uh, from Romans 5, 17, while you are still smoking, they'll still do it. Yeah. While you're still watching that pornography, they'll still do it and not tell their pastors about it. Confess, I'm the righteousness of God in Christ. Now, Jeremy, the last thing you right want to do, it, yeah. right in the middle of it, the last thing you want to do while you're smoking is to feel like a hypocrite because the devil's going to come and tell you, what did you just say? Yeah. You know, you are such a hypocrite because he does not want you to say that. Now listen carefully, all right? You have to remove this idea from your minds and your hearts that grace and love is ABCs. Holiness is deep. You have to remove from, you this, from yourself this idea because you know why? We do not know as much as, as we should yet the length, the depth, the breadth, the height of the love of Christ which passes all knowledge. It takes the Holy Spirit to teach us the love of Christ. Holiness, law, doesn't take the Holy Spirit. The law is not hard. Do good, you get good. Do bad, you get bad. You need the Holy Spirit? You, you need the Holy Spirit to teach you. You can receive good you don't deserve because another received all the bad he didn't deserve. Come on, church, hallelujah! And all because, church, don't misunderstand me. There is no way, no way we are saying that God is not holy, God has gone soft on sin. Today, God justifies you. Do you know why there is therefore now no condemnation for you in Christ? You know why? It's because God is holy. Because 2,000 years ago, a lonely figure hung on that tree for you and I. He who knew no sin became sin with our sins, that we who knew no righteousness can become righteous with His righteousness. And because God is holy, God, when He carried our sins, God unleashed the fullness of His holy fury and indignation, stroke after stroke of all His judgment fell in the body of, on, of Jesus Christ. And Jesus exhausted all of God's anger and shouted, Finish! Are you listening? Today, because Jesus has been judged in the eyes of justice. God, who is holy, cannot impute the same sin He punished Jesus for to you. If you are a believer. The word we have access, we have, and the word into this grace in which we stand, we stand. Both of them is in the perfect tense. And people, perfect tense means it's a once and for all act never to be repeated. That means our position through Christ is favor with God forever. This is a permanent boon, a permanent position, a permanent privilege. You cannot be removed from that position because you didn't put yourself in that position. It is through Christ also we have access by faith into this favor in which we stand. And the word stand is again in perfect tense. So we have in perfect tense, Stand perfect tense, which means, people, once you are saved, you are forevermore in favor with God. So if there comes a preaching, if there comes a teaching, if you are reading a book and it gives you the idea that you can fall out of favor with God, throw it away. It is not God. God cannot give you this verse and assure you, even in the original language of the Greek, in perfect tense, twice in the same line, tell you it's permanent, never to be repeated. And then you think that, wow, I, I better watch it now because once I'm in this position of favor, I don't want to lose it. What makes you think that your doing or not doing can cause you to lose that favor ground? When you, you never got it in the first place because of what you did. Being justified by faith, again, even your past, you're forgiven not because of what you did. It is through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Your present, present position in favor is also through Him. That we have permanent access into this favor. It's a permanent standing.
What is your definition of holiness, and how do we get grace into that? Okay, um, the the Hebrew word for for holiness, all right, you have kadosh, like I mentioned just now, the holy of holies, kadosh hakadoshim, and the Greek in the New Testament for holiness is the word hagiosmos, hagios, which is separation. So, when when for example, uh, um, I'm sure there's a place where Laurie keeps and separates her jewelries. It's not for common use, right? So in, in the Greek, they'll probably use the word hagios. Hagios. She hagios her jewelry, okay. you know? But we have made something religious out of the word. And I think a lot of people, when they hear, they hear um, holiness, they don't think of separation. They think of, of behavior. And there is a part where you are to be holy in all your, your ways in your life. But that is the fruit and the result of right believing. Hmm. Right believing will produce right living. Grace is the root Holiness is the fruit. Now, the opposite of holiness is not sin. Hello. The opposite of holiness is commonness, being common. Wow. And God wants His people separate. So when others are depressed, you are at peace. When wow. others are always broke, you are provided for. Hmm. When others are scurrying around, you know, distress and all that, God's shalom hmm. guards your hearts and mind. You, when people look at you, there's something separate. You are a, like a different being in a class of your own. You, you stand out, a just like Jesus, a peculiar people in the right sense, in the positive sense of the word. And you look at Jesus, he's different. That's separation. Mm -hmm. But what we, have, we have done is that we put separation in the area of your clothes and what you, how, you, how thick is your makeup. You know, people ask me how thick a woman should put on makeup. <laughs> it's pretty thick right now. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. How much makeup do you think a woman should have? I say it all depends on her face. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and how much hairspray should Joseph Prince have on? A lot. It's pretty windy here. <laughs> yeah. You don't so, have any hairspray on, do you? I, I do. I do. Okay, right. Yeah. Got it. 100 mile an hour hairspray. <laughs> exactly. That's what we this is. And, and um, a lot of us, we just relegate holiness to behavior modification, yeah. but not heart transformation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. When somebody, uh, and they're having problems receiving from the Lord or whatever, the first area they look at is, what have I done wrong? Right. And somehow the teaching that we have, we have heard brings us to that conclusion. We never ask, what have I believed wrong? Mm. Instead, we ask, what have I done wrong? Wow. But the law says what? The man who does them, performs them, shall live by them. In other words, it's a, a life of performance. It's a life of working. It's a life of speaking. Hey, I'm not referring to your career. If any will not work, neither should he eat, okay? I'm talking about sp performing, all right? To get a miracle, performing, to get a blessing, performing, to get God's acceptance. God is saying, performance is not the righteousness I want. I want the speaking righteousness. I want you to believe and speak. And this is what God said to me last night. You can write this down. I'm telling you, I wrote it down in my notebook. It's so precious. God says, all right, as long as you are doing or performing, as long as you are doing, the devil is winning. Then he said, as long as you are speaking, the devil is losing. I repeat, as long as you are doing, the devil is winning. As long as you are speaking, the devil is losing. That's why he will have you think, well, I've done so much, like the prodigal son's brother. I've done so much for you, father. You, I never get anything good from you. Amen. He's focused on his doing and yet God gives to the one who speaks faith the woman with the issue of blood she says if I touch his clothes I shall be well she spoke it before she touched it that's all is needed Jesus turned and says your faith made you well are you listening church the law is not of faith, it's antithesis. Listen, it's like these two hands. Speaking, doing. The more you do, the less you speak. This Old Testament. God's way is what? Speak, 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 speak. More and more. Wow. A lot of it is faith, but also planning, you know? Yeah, wow. I mean, right, Evangelist Bunky, you know, who's in heaven now, um, that's how that's how he he would do it you know he he would feel a leading to go somewhere and the holy spirit would lead him and uh there's a story i think he talks he used to talk about it where um you know the lord would lead him in a place and 
you know, logistically, it's not the, it's not the best place, but because of prayer, because of his faith, God brought, God brought the people. 